Tennessee Tech head coach Dwayne Alexander. The Golden Eagles will take on Tennessee State at home this weekend, coming off a, a loss against nationally ranked uh, Southeast Missouri uh, this past weekend. Uh, they have now faced uh, three nationally ranked opponents in a row uh, over the last uh, three games. So, Coach, just some thoughts on your team, and we'll go to some questions. Now, first of all, I'm very proud of my team. I'm very proud of how hard they're competing, uh, how they're preparing each week. I just came off the practice field, literally just straight off the practice field into here to do this. Uh, just a second ago, we're on fall break uh, here for a couple of days, so we kick practice back a little bit this morning so we can have more meeting time, a little more recovery time for our guys. But – uh, and if you came to our football practice and you would have no idea what our record is, you would think we were a four and one football team and not, not one and four Our guys are competing hard. They're playing hard. Uh, literally it's just been a few plays, um, in the last three games, you know, the Sanford game where, uh, we've got the lead in the game 28, 27 with, you know, two minutes left in the football game. Uh, you know, UT Martin really, you know, three or four plays in, in the game and, uh, a whole different game in the same way last week. I mean, really the last two minutes and 40 seconds before half, it's 13-13 with 2.40 left in the half. You know, second half, uh, you know, it was a 7-7 football game. Uh, you know, we ran 44 plays for 200 yards in the second half of the game. Uh, they ran 29 plays for 108. Uh, their longest pass completion in the second half last week was 11 yards, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, just the things we had before halftime, having the interception that was returned to our 26, uh, you know, gave up a loss contained on a kickoff return. And really it's more things we're doing to ourselves than what our opponent is. And we played very good opponents. Okay. That's not, uh, that those guys had a lot to do with some of the, um, you know, think uh, plays that haven't gone our way, but uh, we played really good opponents, but our guys have been competing hard and certainly have had opportunity to uh, be in those games in the fourth quarter. Uh, so I am proud of them. Uh, you know, we're, we're still working. Our guys still believe in what we're doing. They believe in, uh, you know, our program, they believe in, in all that. I mean, you can tell by how they're playing and how they're competing and how they're practicing. So, you know, we had a great team meeting Sunday. We had practice yesterday. We had a good uh, a good practice this morning. And we know that, uh, you know, hey, it's OVC play. You know, we got a TSU coming in here. We, we know that uh, like all these opponents that we played before, I see really no difference in, in these guys and the three teams we've seen the previous three weeks. There's a lot of, a lot of really good football players and, uh, uh, and I know, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a we're going to have our hands full this Friday night. At least we are back at home in Tucker Stadium. So we're excited about that and excited about having uh, Eddie George and the TSU Tigers come here. All right. We'll go to some questions. Uh, we'll go Mike first and then Ben. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Dwayne. How you doing? Hey, Mike. Good to see you, brother. You too, brother. Hey, you mentioned uh, uh, your team. Uh, is there anything more specific that has come around uh, maybe since the early part of the season, or that need, still needs to come around, run game, pass game, defense. Is there one thing that's been causing you any issues? Well, you know, I mean, defensively, it's just been, a, you know, a few big plays, you know, just some big plays. I mean, plays where, you know, a quarterback scrambles, we get our eye in the backfield, we get on a fourth and three against Sanford, you know, and give up a 40-yard touchdown. You know, I mean, that's just a, uh, those are things you go back you know, you show it on film, you try to get better. It's been a special teams play. You know, really it's just been a play in the face of the game here or there, things you work on every day in practice and spring practice and summer and fall camp and you work on them during practice. Then we take a Sunday and go back out, you know, and go through all the explosive plays or plays that gave us trouble, you know, in the game. It's just a matter of executing them in the game. You know, some of our issues, special teams, uh, we've had quite a few uh, – uh, you know, we've had the injury bug a little bit. You know, we had, I think, five secondary guys that did not make the trip to uh, to SEMO, for example, you know, and those are all guys that are on our special teams as well. We were really – well, we're taking uh, – you know, you can travel 70 to away games or home – in OVC play, you can dress 70 players or travel 70 players. We took 62 players to SEMO last week. So there was wow. – everybody had a bus – a seat to themselves, you know, for the ride over. That was a good thing. The bad thing, we'd like to fill those other eight seats with uh, – you know, guys that have been starting playing ball games, but you know, that's everybody in the league. Everybody, you're not going to go through the season totally injury free. A key to any football season, uh, if you're going to have a championship season, it's those key injuries that you got to stay away from to uh, key players. I know Eddie's had a lot of guys out. TSU has had some guys, you know, in and out of the lineup and just your consistency of being able to do things. But, you know, here, I, number one, my, my number one thing, anybody, if you're going to be on this football team, you're going to practice like a starter. That's how we do it. You're going to practice like a starter because you never know when you're going to be a starter. You know, you could be a third team guy when the bus got parked and you may be starting by the time the second quarter rolls around. That's the reality of, you know, of football. So, uh, and I've been proud of our guys that have stepped in and played. They played hard and played well, and we've had opportunities to win the games. Okay. Uh, 
to do that. So I would just say so, um, the big thing, uh, Mike, is just consistency. I think all coaches, you know, chase that, but just uh, uh, it just think, you know, just a few plays, uh, you know, just snake bit on. But if I had to, you know, sum up, you know, why we're not four and one instead of the reason we're one and four, I'd say, you know, some big plays we've given up on defense, and uh, but we played very good defense outside of about four plays a game. You know, I mean, uh, uh, the Martin game, they had five, they had five plays for 300 yards, five plays for 300 yards. Okay. The rest of the game, the rest of the game, they averaged like three yards a play. You know, I mean, we played really good defense, you know, the whole uh, rest of the game, but you can't take those five plays out. Same way on offense, you know, we had a wide open touchdown uh, uh, that we just missed on. Uh, uh, you know, before uh, in the in the second quarter against Semo, I mean, we had some plays we had opportunity to make. Uh, we settled for field goals and they scored touchdowns a couple times. You know, but uh, you know, really nothing. You just got to keep chasing it, you know, and keep showing it, you know, and keep doing it and keep working it. And uh, uh, and when you play really good opponents, uh, Mike, we're just in a situation where you know every single mistake or any error. I mean, it is magnified. I mean, you know, we have to play a game to where you know we need a ball to bounce our way or you know, uh, maybe a, an, an interference call that didn't get called, you know, just, I mean, I'm talking just a play, you know, in the game could be uh, the difference in, uh, you know, in winning the game. And right now we just haven't been able to overcome those. But uh, as far as the fight in our team, the competitive center team, uh, uh, you know, we're making some big plays on offense. Uh, I could put together a highlight film and you would think the Tennessee Tech Gold <laughs> Eagles are a really good football team, okay? And we are a good team. We've got a good team. Uh, we need to validate that on the scoreboard here. We've got uh, – you know, six more weeks to do that, seven more weeks, a lot of big football games left. We got three games left here in October, which are huge. You know, two of them are conference games. One's against uh, Kennesaw State, which is no picnic trip to have to go take. And then we've got three games in November. So, you know, we got a lot of the season left. We got two conference games left and uh, we have a lot to uh, to play for. And uh, you know, I see, I told our guys, let's see what seven FCS wins will do for the Golden Eagles at the end of the year. You know, so that's kind of where we're at, Mike. My only other question would be, you mentioned the big defensive plays. Uh, you see it, you're going up against a quarterback. You mentioned you've let some quarterbacks slip out a couple of times. What do you remember about Draylon Ellis? Uh, you didn't see him last year. The last time you saw him, he was in an Austin B uniform. Uh, is he a potential big play guy? Oh, he most certainly is. And uh, we did see him in the last game of the year uh, at, at Austin P last year. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, you're right. He, he's yeah. got a, a different number and a different color uniform. But let me tell you, he's the same electric uh, shaky bait guy in there. I can tell you that right now. He's a real deal. He's got a strong arm, too. He throws the football with so much. Man, he can make all the throws. And, uh, you know, and then all those off-schedule plays, that's kind of what uh, – you know, there's quarterbacks in the league that do that. I know, uh, you know, uh, Jeremiah Oatsfall, our quarterback, is able to do that. You know, some, whenever the play breaks down, is able just to make a play, you know, go make a play here or there. He's been doing that in a, in games. Draylon does the same thing. He throws a, you know, throws a good deep ball. He gets the ball out quick on all their quick screen game. He's got explosive guys to throw to, a uh, big offensive line, uh, good backs. You know, all the backs run hard. You know, they have a physical run game. Uh, uh, so, uh, but he's a, he's an exciting player. And, and the scariest thing about him when you play him is besides the, you know, his throwing ability and those things is it just, well, when you pressure or blitz to try to get pressure on him, as you know, if you let him out or if you don't get to him, man, he's going to create something big. And so just trying to contain that, you know, try to contain and limit, you know, the amount of times he just gets out in the open field uh, will be big for us and how we pressure and smart, how we pressure and our rush lanes are going to be uh, important. And I'm sure they'll, the healthier he's getting, uh, you know, uh, designed quarterback runs. We know that there's going to be some of those potential for those in the game to where, you know, he's going to have the ability to actually keep the ball in the run game and they can run and throw off of it. So, uh, and, I, and the, to me, that is the X factor in, in football right now, especially college football, is when you've got a quarterback that can make plays with his feet, uh, uh, it, it creates just some extra anxiety for you defensively. All right, Dwayne. I look forward to seeing you Saturday. Hey, Good luck. You too, brother. Appreciate you. We'll go to Ben next. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, so, Coach, you talked about the quarterback a little bit. You know, what do you uh, what do you see from the rest of Tennessee State when you look at them on? Well, you know, usually what I see when you turn on Tennessee State film, uh, big offensive line. I'm talking big, uh, strong, physical offensive linemen. You know, really good backs. You know, the uh, Starlin. You know, I think he's been a little banged up, but he's been back playing. He, he's such a good back. You know, he was a you know freshman of the year in the OVC here a couple of years ago. He's outstanding. Uh, uh, back, you know, they have, uh, you know, big receivers, uh, physical receivers on the outside, you know, game-breaking receivers, uh, offensively, defensively, very active, a big defensive front, uh, 
Uh, you know, they got some, uh, you know, they play a lot of guys up there in their defensive front. They play some four down, they play some three down. They've got a, I think about a 380 pound nose guard they can put in there. You know, that boy, they're big and physical up front and active linebackers are Sean Bryant. I remember him back in high school at Cane Ridge. It feels like he's been around as long as Rico Council has. Our, our uh, defensive end coach who was an all OVC linebacker and a player of the year at TSU back in the early 2000s. But Deshaun's a, Deshaun, number 11, really good player, uh, very active. You know, they brought in Pope, a, a transfer linebacker, you know, very active on defense. All their guys can, uh, to me, I mean, defensively, can you run and hit? That's the name of the game on defense is being able to run and hit. Because if you can run and you can hit, you know, you knock the ball out, turnovers happen. Those type of things. They have a lot of guys on defense, secondary wise, linebacker wise. They can all run and hit. They're very uh, physical team. Uh, Coach Fisher does a really good job with their their defensive guys. They got solid special teams. Always have people that are scary to kick the ball to. So uh, you know, just a, a very good uh, you know very good team. And, and here uh, you know from the TSU perspective, you know uh, uh, for those guys, they've not played a single conference game yet. So they're sitting there going, "Hey, this is a new season for us. Where you know, let's take the." It's been a preseason for us, you know. We played football games already, you know, but we're 0 and 0 in the conference. They got a, a conference slate, you know, coming up that, uh, um, you know, they've got some good home games, you know, on their schedule. The way the conference schedule works out for them, I think they've got uh, Martin and Semo both at home, uh, which is uh, good for them. So, uh, you know, they're looking at, uh, um, you know, got this one circled. It's an OVC game. It's OVC game number one for them getting into conference play. So. They still have all their, you know, conference goals ahead of them there. And um, so I know, uh, you know, they're going to come in excited and ready to play. Kyle, we have time for one more. Of course, yeah, as much as you need. Okay, uh, just one more thing. You know, uh, so, Coach, you've had a couple games where, you know, there's only you, – you only commit one turnover and it doesn't seem to matter as much. But then you've got games where, you, you know, there's three interceptions and they're kind of key. Do, is there a specific reason why, you know, some games you don't turn the ball over as much? Sometimes you do – Anything like that? Man, if I knew that, I'd write a book and retire. And <laughs> Mike Gordon would, would work out at the Donaldson gym and walk every day, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, but no, but, you know, here, the the, turn, the interceptions in Saturday's game, just, uh, you know, the, the one right before we threw one, you know, with about 26 seconds left in the half, we got a good kick return, got out to midfield, and you know, they ran it back all the way to our 26-yard line. You know, uh, the other two interceptions, one was the last play as a Hail Mary before half. So, I mean, we're just throwing it up right. for – and the other one was same thing. It's the end of the game. We got a fourth and 10 with a minute left in the game down on their, uh, I think, 18-yard uh, line. So, again, you're just trying to make a play right there. It was a ball that was intercepted on fourth down. So, they really weren't, you know, the the the, the ones that have hurt have just been the ones there. You know, we had it happen two games in a row. Martin, we start the third quarter with a pick six. Um, only, only turnover in the game by either offense was that one, but it was six points, you know, seven points for the other team. And then the one in the SEMO game is a 2013 game. Um, you know, and they, uh, you know, we're trying to make something happen. We got three timeouts left. We got the ball at midfield. So, I mean, you know, uh, we're going to be aggressive there. We're playing on the road against a really good team. We got the ball at midfield with three timeouts and, um, you know, just, you know, just one of them, just a little overthrown and a good play by their defensive guy, then the long return and they get the touchdown, uh, you know, before half, but, uh, you know, not, not, nothing you know, special. I mean, nothing really. I mean, we've been we haven't fumbled the football. We've taken really good care of the ball at the running back and receiver position as far as that goes. Ours have just been the untimely ones. And on the other side of that, we've got to create some turnovers. I think TSU has had 10 so far in the season, you know, uh, going through five games. They've had five interceptions and five fumbles. So, you know, we need some of that, you know, for this game. We need to create a turnover, create some fumble on – the defensive side of the ball, I mean, it creates some field position, uh, you know, for offense and play a little more complimentary football uh, is really what we need to play. Now, boy, we're just not far off, but, um, you know, if we could just do a couple of those things. Uh, uh, but but I'm encouraged and excited about it, like I said, just by watching our guys practice. And, um, you know, I, I, we're going to be excited to play uh, uh, this uh, Saturday against TSU. All right, thanks. Good luck, Coach. All right, thank you. Thanks, Coach, for being flexible and uh, joining us after practice today. And uh, best of luck. And then we'll talk to you again in two weeks. Okay. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you.